Lisa, welcome to the sisterhood. Thank you, Krista. I'm so excited to be here with you and Alexandra. It's so fun. Oh, it's so <laughs> fun. All right, Texas girl, tell us about your life. <laughs> Well, I'm actually an Idaho girl transplanted to Texas. So I grew up in Northern Idaho, Lewiston, Idaho, for those of you who know Idaho. I'm the oldest of seven kiddos. And my, I got married to my husband, Mark. His parents also are from Idaho. And he sw uh, swept me off my feet and brought me to Texas in 1995. And we've been here ever since with just a quick, short five-year stint in Denver and um but came back to texas we i really love it here idaho has my heart but texas is my home now mm -hmm. wow the oldest of seven okay now i'm understanding a little bit why you're wired the way that you are i mean how did that shape you well as the oldest i was giving a ton given a ton of responsibility um i was 12 and 14 when the last two kiddos were born in our family and my mom really relied on me and she trusted me with a lot of things with the babies and with taking care of the house and house management. I worked for my dad in his office. Um, and so I really feel like my parents instilled in me a great work ethic that just transitioned into my adult life. And especially with organizing, I just feel like all the different seasons of my life have come to culmination here and I really give my parents credit for that, for we always were taught that hard work came before play. We worked hard and then we got to play hard. And so I really feel like they really gave me a good foundation in my life. And being the oldest of seven really shaped me in a lot of different ways with my personality, with my get up and go goodness, and with my take charge. <laughs> my sisters might not like that, but I sure did. <laughs> Well, how did you get into professional organizing? Well, I call this my third season of life. And so after college, I worked in marketing for a radio station and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I wrote commercials. I had client, client lists that I saw. And then when we moved to Texas, I came from a small town to the great big town of Dallas. And I was a little overwhelmed with moving. And so I stayed home with the kiddos. And then quickly got offered a job teaching second grade in their Christian school. And so I transitioned from marketing and my big girl job, I call it, into teaching. And I loved that because I was on the same schedule as my kids and my kids and my family are everything. And so that really was a beautiful 17 year stint in my life. And then when we came back to Texas from Colorado, we had grandbabies. And so <laughs> that was fun. And I actually taught preschool in the same preschool that four of my grandkiddos graduated from. So all that to be said, in 2017, I just really wanted to try this organizing, like Mar the Marie Kondo book had come out and social media was such that I was finding all these other organizers. And I was like, I 100% know I can do this. And so in 2017, in June, I just said, let's do it. And I started a Neat Freak McKinney Instagram business page and a Facebook page and three and a half, almost four years later, it's crazy town, but good. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, um, Wow. Okay. I, that's amazing that it's still pretty recent. I mean, that doesn't feel like that long ago, but you, I mean, you've been in hundreds of homes, you've helped so many people. And I mean, really that's why we wanted to have you on is because you are so good at coming into spaces and really helping families and women identify what it is that's holding them back. So maybe start there. What do you feel like are the biggest barriers that people experience in getting their homes organized? Well, yes, thank you for that sweet note. Um, I love going into homes and I love helping women. I feel like now I'm in my fifties and because of the other jobs I've had, I understand working moms and moms with young kids at school and the empty nesters now. And so that, but it's so funny because across the board, 
it's the same problem. Number one, we have too much stuff, period. If you can't organize when you have too much, there's no way to do that unless you edit some of that out. And then the other thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that I really try to teach my clients is you really, once I get the system in place for you, then a weekly reset is something that is so important when things are coming in like groceries, there's a place for them. Everything is labeled, get your family on board. Um, and so those two things, too much stuff, and then not doing a week, at least, you know, a weekly reset are the biggest roadblocks that I have find, found with my clients. Let's talk about the weekly reset. What does that look like? How do you practically make room in your schedule for that? Well, I feel like, you know, getting our hair done is a priority, you know, going to Target is a priority. And so if we <laughs> put those things on our calendar as a reset. And for me, when I, when I had all my kids at home, Friday was just the day that I wanted to reset. And I loved having everything ready to go into the weekend because we were always busy. We always had kids at our house, but whatever day works best for you. And those are things that you just need to sit down and really look at your schedule and figure out when can I carve out a couple of hours to do the reset. And when I say reset, it means that the whole family is on board. Everybody picks up the stuff that has dropped by the front door, dropped by the back door, everything gets put back where it lives. And that's where I come in because I set up systems and zones for every single thing in your house. And so when you bring the groceries in, like I do grocery shopping once a week, when, or if you know a lot of my clients have groceries delivered. And so uh, that's a great day to do a reset because you're loading the refrigerator, you're putting things back into the pantry, you're cleaning out the refrigerator, hopefully. So just by purposefully planning a reset that the whole family is on board with, it makes everything go so much smoother. I can definitely see how that is the case because I mean, it's the maintaining. I think that is for me, that's the biggest struggle. I can set up a system with the best of them. I mean, I actually love creating systems. It's in my strength zone. I absolutely love the creation of the system. I don't like the running of the system. And that's where my struggle is. And so I think having those like regular things in place, and actually one of the things you said, cleaning out the refrigerator, I do that weekly. And a part of that is because I'm trying to maintain really stewardship of the food that we are buying. And so if I don't have that organized, I know I won't use what's in there because I don't even know how to find it in there. There's too many things. And so even right. things like that, you know, that's just a good stewardship principle. And exactly. yeah, I have to force myself to do that. And so usually I'll put on something like a podcast that I really wanted to listen to or a Ted talk or something where I can be learning. And then it kind of feels like I'm redeeming the time a little bit. It absolutely does. For me, I love putting on fun music. And I tell my clients that too, when the whole family, especially like if I'm by myself, I'm like you, I'm putting on a podcast or something to, to fill my brain while I'm doing the, the tasks. But when the whole family is involved, there's something about putting on fun music you know, and everybody gets to pick a song. It just makes it a really fun time. And so I always try to encourage my clients to do something like that, where the whole family's involved and it's fun, make it fun. Mm -hmm. I like that. Everybody picks a song. That's fun. You could do even a playlist where everyone's picking a song on the playlist and that's your family cleaning playlist. I love it. Yes. Yeah. What would you say are hot zones for the home? So that is going to be whatever door you come in. So if you pull into the garage and come in through the back door, that's what, what, where, we, where we come in and it's right by our laundry room and we have a bench there. And that really does become just a quick drop for my bags or anything that I have to return to the container store or my husband's backpack and coats and hats and all of those things. So the drop zone, wherever your drop zone is, the front door, the back door, in the garage, and then the kitchen, kitchen tables, kitchen counters. Um, if a lot of my clients have that little desk area in the kitchen, 
And that seems to be the pile up place where people drop the mail or the kids put their backpacks. Then the other place that I have found is the home office. Um, a lot of home offices have doors. And so with companies coming, everything gets shoved in the office and shut the door. Mm -hmm. So that one's out of sight. But the ones that are in sight that everybody can see are those the, the doorways that you come in and the kitchen table, kitchen counters. So help us if you're, if you're coming in and you are going to say, okay, we're going to create systems for these hot zones. What are those? So for me, it's a basket, whatever age your children are too, that does play into it. A basket for little kids, all the shoes can go in there A hook for the backpack that's down low. Even like I taught three-year-olds, they can hang up their backpacks. They love helping. So get them started when they're young. And then uh, like my husband always had golf stuff in his pocket or, you know, his keys or his change. So giving him his own basket, you know, helped him to just that he could drop everything in. And then in that weekly reset, those are the things that, okay, go clean out your bin, go clean out your shoe basket. Let's put everything back. If you have your church shoes, those need to go back up the stairs in your closet, those kind of things. But by giving each person their own little space that they can control, or in a minute when everything is crazy and busy, okay, just put it in your basket. And then whatever day of the week that we're going to do the reset, you can go in and clean it out. So baskets, open, open baskets that little, you know, kids can put stuff in and hooks are the best thing that I have found for busy families. And then I label the hooks, um, label the bins, label everything. Even if they can't read, you can put a picture of tennis shoes on a bin and that you know, with their name, they can learn how to spell their name. And then that way, everybody has their spot that they're responsible for. What is your favorite label that you use? Well, I, it depends. So it depends if it's a, a bin, an open bin. I love the metal clip on labels. Uh, you can get them at Target. You can get them at the container store. You can get them on Amazon. And some of them are whiteboards that you can change, which is awesome. Um, some of them have a paper, little paper thing that you can slide in and change. I love to put the vinyl labels. If it's a really like a permanent label that's gonna live there, I know that for a long time, then I love the vinyl labels and they apply those to the metal clips um, or just a good old fashioned label maker. I have a brother's label maker that does like little tiny labels. And then I have a P-Touch Cube Plus that makes and like one inch labels. And whatever the label is, it just has to work for you. Whatever, it doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to say what goes in that bin. Mm -hmm. I like the weekly reset being incorporated into the bins because here's the issue at our house is we're like, we'll just get bins and then everything will be stuffed in there. And then the, soon the bins are overflowing. But this is the weekly part of the weekly reset is emptying the bins and putting everything away or whatever it is, the basket or the container of whatever's right. holding the junk. Right. Or stuff. It has to be dealt with. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not, that's not, it's not an open-ended bin. It, it doesn't mean that you have permission to let it go. You, the bin is, serves a purpose and that label serves a purpose. And then I always say, anything you bring into your home has to be dealt with and ha you have to deal with it. Otherwise you're gonna end up completely overwhelmed. So you have to just build that in into your system is that we are going to deal with this as a family, whether it's Sunday night before school starts or you know, for me, it was Friday night before you guys go have fun, you have to do these things for me. And my kids were always like, okay, we'll, we'll do it. So whatever day it is that you guys decide as a family and have a family meeting, let them be part of the process. Um, I always say communication is best because a lot of times I know I was guilty of this when I, in my brain, I'm like, there's a bin with your name on it. I'm, I'm expecting you to, <laughs> to put your stuff there, but I hadn't verbalized it and everybody's different. And so have that family meeting and just tell them how important this is to you. And I really feel like, they love you. They're going to honor you with that and get everybody on board. Well, so let's talk about that. Different families have different personalities. They have different ways of operating. Some are maybe a little more, um, 
just clear in their systems and organization and some are more casual. So in working with multiple clients over the years, how have you adapted how families organize? So I've actually had family meetings. One of the moms that I worked with early on, she just said, I don't know how to get my family on board. And she said, will you come and do like a family meeting? And I said, as long as your husband and everybody, you know, everybody's okay with that. Sure. But I feel like in just communicating, and I feel like a lot of people think they communicate, at least I did, because to me, that communication was, I made you a label and it has your name on it. Why can't you put your <laughs> stuff in there? Did not compute to members of my family until I said to them, this is, this is really stressing me out. This is something that I need to be able to function freely and love our home. And when you, when you put it that way, it makes a huge difference. Now, I will talk about husbands and the wives versus your kiddos. So I've had to let go of a lot of things <laughs> because my sweet <laughs> husband is messy. He's messy. Mark. He is meticulous in some things, but in the teeny tiny details of stuff, he, he doesn't even see it. But of course I do. And so I've just had to learn to respect that about him. That is something that, that is how God made him. But, you know, he's gotten better because I've learned how to communicate better. Now with my children, that's a different story. When they were at home, to me, it was a, a discipline issue. If they didn't, we have a saying in our house, you know, you need to obey immediately, completely, and truthfully. And if you're not doing those three things, you're not honoring the Lord, therefore you're not honoring your parents. And so that was something that was to me, if I told my kiddos, okay, this is the day that we're going to do the reset. And this is the day that I need all of these things done. And I made systems for them. So it wasn't hard. It was just something like I said earlier, it has to be dealt with. And for them to be able to go do their social things, that was the requirement that I had of them. So for me, for them, that was incentive enough to get it done. Now, you know, if it was a repeat offense, right? We have to give grace in different times and seasons of life. But if it was a repeat offense, that was something that I had to sit down and talk to them about, you know, this is, this is something that you're not doing. And it was really important to me and we need to honor that. So, you know, you have to give... <laughs> It's different with your spouse than it is with your kids. Does that make sense? I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think every mom has to choose what am I, what is my priority right. and what am I willing to kind of lay down the law around and um, pick your battles. People, right. And pick your battles. So I think I really appreciate the, what is going to incentivize my children. And if you want to go do this, then you need to do this first. Or if you want to watch TV, you need to do this first. And that has been the main thing I have found has been helpful because I have a hard time kind of laying down the law sometimes. And and I don't, the truth is I don't want to argue with my kids about some things. Like I feel like I argue with them about a lot of things. So I have to choose what are the things I'm going to really say, this is a non-negotiable. Right. And so if, if there are things where I can find, I don't have to do that because I just say, well, if you want to do that, you have to clean up first. I think then that kind of removes the conflict because they're incentivized by the reward, right. which is, it becomes their choice. Yeah. It's your choice if you want to do mm -hmm. these things. And I don't say it like, I don't, it, you don't have to be mean about it, but you just make it an important thing. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. I like that. It's your choice. You can choose to do that or not. And I don't care, but you have to be willing to say, <laughs> you have to be willing to say, I don't care if you don't do it. Right. right? Because right. then you're choosing not to go out with your friends, but then also the mess isn't being dealt with in the way I'm asking you to. Right. And so there's a second part of that too, that I also want to address that going back to that first question is if there's too much stuff in the home, it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes different personalities, they see that mess or the clutter and literally they feel frozen. They literally do not know how to proceed. So if that is an issue in your home, 
then you have to address there's too much stuff. There's too much to deal with. So we need to edit some things down. We need to donate some of these things or mm -hmm. sell them. So just be sure that 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 is being addressed as well. I think that's really good. And I've seen, I mean, we talked last week on the podcast about me being frozen in, too, in feeling overwhelmed, um, but I have seen it in my kids and especially my youngest daughter, who's nine. She, I tell her to clean her room and she is absolutely overwhelmed. And it's because she doesn't have a proper place for everything. So right. I haven't helped her set up the system for her to succeed. Exactly. Can you, while we're talking about relationships and <laughs> maybe things, can you do a, just a little two minute tips on kids sharing a room? Yes. Again, less is more. I can't, I can't stress that enough. That is, if, if you, if I had to give one tip, that's it. Less is more. There's less things to take care of. The other thing I love doing when I set up sibling bedrooms is give them each a different color hanger. So let, and let them pick out the color of hanger. Get, like I said, get them invested in it. So then the white hangers go to sister and the green hangers go to brother or whatever the combo is. And then they know, okay, I need to hang up my stuff and here's my hanger and there's your hanger. Also under bed bins, again, labeled. And so like with my grandson, I helped my daughter do an under bed bin because he had tons of cards and tons of art supplies and tons of things that were just taking up clutter everywhere. But we got him one bin and it lives. That's the only thing that's allowed to go in those bins. And it's so easy to tuck it, slide it underneath his bed. And then he knows that if I want to get my cards and my art supplies, here's, here's what I can can grab and then or the the beanie babies or the you know the dolls however that is set up if the toys are in the bedroom that is I should say that but for siblings sharing a room they each get that like their zone their bed is their zone and their nightstand is their zone however it is set up and their their portion of the closet is their zone and that way if one of the siblings is being messy you could quickly go in and say, okay, this side looks great. Let's visit this side and see what's going on. Does that help? Yeah, I think that's very helpful. Well, and one of the things I want to add here is that I have one of my sons, you know, he didn't want systems, but I went in and I said, sorry, we're doing them <laughs> because this room is out of control. Right. And so you know, I, I just, and, and I made it simple. I just got bins, but I did, I even labeled the one that says underwear. Like I put a bin in his drawer and it says underwear. I'm not kidding. It works. The, it tells them where to put things. I don't know how to say it, but they obey the sign. It's like, they it's do. weird. They obey the sign. And so they don't know, <laughs> do what I want them to do, but they'll do what the sign says. And so right. anyway, it's that whole thing of, even though he didn't want it, when he has it, he uses it and it's good. And it, yes. it helps him organize and it helps for, for me, it helps to know that when I say, go clean your room, I'm not just kind of giving this nebulous instruction. Mm -hmm. He has, okay, this is where my golf balls go. This is where, you know, my, my golf shoes go. This is, you know, cause he's a golfer. So like, yes. you know, there's just, there's a place for everything. Yeah. It's a roadmap for him to follow. And that's mm -hmm. what I was talking about. If you're, if you know your child's personality or your personality, I have a lot of overwhelmed moms that just cannot function, but by giving those systems and the signs, like you said, it breaks it down. So they don't even have to think about it. They are just, it's mm -hmm. just becomes, you know, this is the, this is where it goes. And it, it makes everything so much easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back to the overwhelmed mom and let's say you're coming <laughs> into a space and it's so much, I mean, there's the garage and there's the kitchen and the food and the pans and the 14 spatulas. And I mean, right. It's like the whole house needs to be done. The bathroom and all the cosmetics and right. There's just, just it, pretend and, like you're coming to my house. So yeah. that's the, <laughs> so that's the overwhelm, we go. right. Is that it's <laughs> right. like, okay, there's so much to do. Where do I begin? So you start small and you break it down. There's no way, even 
even me, I, I'm a professional organizer. I literally do this, you know, all, all day, every day. There's no way to do the entire house at one time. So when I go to a client's home, say I'm at Alexandra's home, she's hired me and I come in, then I will walk the home and walk the room with you. And then we make a plan and we prioritize. Okay. And for me, I always, if, the, if they don't know where to start, I always say, let's start with the pantry and kitchen, because for me, that's the heart of the home. It's the space that's getting used multiple times a day. It's where families start and end their day. So let's start there and then break it even down farther. Okay. Let's just do the pantry. So we pull everything out. We sort it like with like we purge anything, edit anything that is expired or that you found in the corner that you're like, well, how did that get back there? And then you just <laughs> do it in those steps. Then I'm there to help you create the system. And then here's the breakfast zone. Here's the lunch zone. Here's the snack zone. Here's the dinner zone. Here is a floor basket that everybody's lunchbox is going to go in this one floor basket. Here's where all the reusable sacks go. So that again, breaking it down so that everybody in the family can see. The other thing, if you're, and if you don't want to hire or can't afford to hire a professional organizer, follow one on, on Instagram or Facebook that you resonate with because everybody's personalities are different. Find an organizer that you resonate with and that they all, we all have tips on our pages. Um, but I always say, if you're so completely overwhelmed, do one drawer at a time, literally one drawer at a time. And pretty soon, if you're systematic about doing that, pretty soon you're going to turn around and your whole house is going to be organized. Mm. So start small, make them tasks that you can start and finish in the time that you've allotted yourself and have little victories. Little victories make you feel proud of yourself and like, okay, I can do this. And then it, it's an incentive to keep going. And I promise it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talked about this last week too, on the podcast, when we were using me as an example and that little victories are helpful. They just keep yeah. you motivated and you think, they oh do. my gosh, I can see my desk. This is yeah. so amazing. And yeah. then you move on to clear off another surface. Um, would another approach be to start with the hot zones? Like sometimes the, the mud room, we have the same thing. We come in through the garage, it's right by the laundry room. Everything gets dumped there. And sometimes for my own mental health, I think in 45 minutes, I can put everything in back to where it's going and it feels like a big ta-da. So yes. is that I, I another think, approach? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's the thing that when I'm talking with my, to my clients in that initial consult, like you, you're telling me that is my button. That is my hot button. And I need this to be the priority. So then that's where you, what I would, where I would suggest that you start. Definitely. The things that stress you out the most start there. Can you give, just going back to the garage, can you give how we systematically clean the garage and organize <laughs> it in a way, because it does become a dump zone. It does. And especially like you live in a, in a winter state, I call it in, in, in Texas, like right now are, we're doing garages. It's, it's sunny out and literally you need a day. You just need to say, this is the day that we're going to tackle the garage. And again, get the whole family on board to help you. And you're literally going to take every single thing out of your garage. You're going to back the car all the way out. You're going to pull it all out into the driveway. And then you know, this guy who's the golfer, you're in charge of going through all the golf stuff. Hubby, you're in charge of going through all of your tools. Um, you know, you're in charge of getting all the bike accessories together and then just break it down and, and categorize everything. And then like, you know, if you have Christmas, it depends on what's in there. If you have storage mm -hmm. for holidays, then all of those each need a bin and they need to be labeled. Um, I'm a big proponent of using vertical space so if you, if that's the time you need to invest in a vertical system, whether it's a garage alpha or, you know, a, a three tiered shelf from Home Depot, there's so many different things out there, but use all that vertical space and get hooks and things that you can hang and use all of that space and then categorize it, you know, put it in zones. Again, this is the sports zone. This is the tool zone. If you need 
a, a tall toolbox on wheels. Those are amazing. Again, you can get those online or at Home Depot, wherever. But the goal is, say the goal today is to number one, get rid of all the stuff we don't need, break down all those Amazon boxes, take out all the trash. And the goal is to get however many cars, these are the, this is a, the garages for parking cars. So that's our goal today. <laughs> so yes. make a, you know, <laughs> make a goal for the day and then give everybody a task. And then when that task is done, guess what? We're all going out to dinner again, mm -hmm. make it fun. Yeah. The incentive at the end. Yeah. And the garage is a huge task. I mean, for most people, the garage is a behemoth. And so like, it's one right. thing to do a drawer. It's another thing to do the garage right. where so that's got... why I say you need, you need a day, mm -hmm. maybe a weekend, depending on the garage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Well, are there any last tips, Lisa, that you would give that you feel like are kind of your best go-tos? Yes. I love to give these tips at the end of the day. So when I'm at a client's house, you've, you've decluttered, you've edited out the things that you don't use and love. You ha now have systems that work. Okay, we're gonna practice two things. We're gonna do the one in, one out rule. So whatever you bring into the house, if it's a basket from Target, something has to leave, something has to go out. If it's new pens for your office, okay, then I need to clear out my pen drawer and toss all the ones that don't work anymore. Whatever it is, one in, one out. And once you're organized, if you practice that rule, it will stay organized, but you have to do it. You, you have to like mentally prepare yourself. And this is what I did personally. <laughs> I went on a spending freeze because I, like three years ago, it was, I had, it was probably four years ago before I became an actual professional organizer, I was teaching school and I love clothes and I love shoes and I love bags and all the things. And I realized this is a bad habit. I'm just buying stuff because it's cute. It's on sale. So now I need those all, I needed it in all three colors, right? All the things I did all the things wrong, but I was tired of it. And I was tired of tossing clothes or donating clothes that still had tags on it because I didn't ever wear them. So I literally put myself on a spending freeze for one entire year and I did it. I mean, I bought essentials. If I was out of makeup, I replaced that makeup, but in my closet, I did not bring a new item of clothing in a new shoe, a new bag, a new anything. And it really trained my brain to stop, stop mm -hmm. the mindless buying, stop using by going shopping as a hobby. And I cannot tell you how much that helped me. And so those two things, put yourself on a spending freeze and just see how it feels. If you want to, every time you go to target, add up the things that you would have bought, bought right? Because we all do that. Um, and then put that amount of money into a savings account to go on a fun vacation. So again, another incentive. Hmm. And then once you do start purchasing things again, the one in one out. Mm -hmm. I love the one in one out. That is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. My husband tried to instill that at our house. <laughs> when we bring stuff home, he'd be like, so what are you getting rid of? And everybody would go. just look at him. But I do <laughs> like that. Um, the idea of knowing mentally when you're standing at target, buying the 12 pack of pens that you're preparing yourself. When I go home, I'm going through the pens. Like this is a package deal. I'm not just yes. going to throw this in and then stuff the new pens into the bin that has all the half used pens. Exactly. In there. So, so just kind of that mental preparation that there is yes. going to be time involved when you get home to right. do the organizing, because I think we we're just frantic and we're saying, ah, we don't have any pens at work. So we're just going to throw pens in the pen bin. And I like that idea of like mentally yeah. preparing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go through the pens when I get home because I'm bringing in 12 new pens. Right. Or the opposite. I'm at Target. I love all these pens, but guess what? I'm not buying anything. I'm going to go home, use up. I'm going to go through the whole house. I'm going to grab all the pens. I'm going to use up every single pen we have, and then I'll buy more. Mm -hmm. So there's- Yeah, that's more responsible. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? And that's the other thing is when we're not organized, mm -hmm. we're buying things that we already have but not knowing where they're at. So I get that a lot of time from clients as well. You know, they're like, how the how come I have five of these? 
because you didn't know where they were. And when I hunted and gathered and brought them all together and grouped like with like items, guess what? You don't need to buy any more of these until these five things are used up, whatever the five things are. Yeah. Oh, Lisa, this is so good. Will you please just come to our houses, please? <laughs> okay, I'm buying my plane ticket right now. <laughs> I would oh love gosh. to do, we could do a whole podcast episode on that. Oh my gosh, it would be a dream. It would be a dream. Well, you're doing such great work in the world and we love having you here and just hearing what and sharing really generously of your expertise. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. You're so welcome. I'm, I feel honored to be here with you guys today. I love your podcast. And now I get to be a guest. It's so exciting. Full circle moment. <laughs> I love it. All right. Have a great day, Lisa. You guys too. Bye. Bye.